Hello and welcome uh, on this Good Friday. My name is Bill Grace. I'm the minister here at St. Luke's Presbyterian Church and St. James Presbyterian Church in Oshawa. Good Friday is a time where we used to have, uh, we would have a joint service with the other churches in Oshawa. This would have been St. Luke's year to, to host where the choirs would have come together and presented their ministries of music. But uh, given that the times are what they are, what I'd like to do with you just at this time is to have a small, quiet time of reflection, read some scripture, and provide maybe a message of, of peace and hope as we head into this Easter weekend. Let's pray before we read. Lord, we ask your blessing over this reading. May you open our eyes, may we be able to hear, may we be able to learn and grow in it. We pray that you continue to lead us in mighty ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I'm doing it a little bit differently than usual. Most times when we read scripture readings, we'll go from the Old Testament and read up into the New Testament. I want to read first from the Gospel of John. It will actually be a little lengthy. It'll be chapters 18 and 19 of the Gospel of John, and then we'll look at the Old Testament passages. Starting in John chapter 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the brook Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew, also knew the place for Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas, having procured a band of soldiers and some officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, went there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that would happen to him, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. So he asked them again, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those whom you gave me, I have lost not one. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I had said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But what if I said, but what if I, <laughs> but if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then sent Jesus bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself, so they said to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. 
One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it. At once a rooster crowed. Then they led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled, but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, If this man were not doing evil, he would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken, to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting, that I may not be delivered over to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from this world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose, I was born. And for this purpose, I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and betrayed him in a public robe, in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, king of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to the law, he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me. Do you not know what I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all, unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now, it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour, he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and he went out, bearing his own cross to the place called the Place of the Skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription 
for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true. He knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, and about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Now I'd like to read from Isaiah chapter 52, starting at verse 13. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up, and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. 
and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous of one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and makes intercession for the transgressors. Amen to the reading of God's holy word. On Thursday, on Monday Thursday, I left us with the, the question, do you understand what I have done for you? On Good Friday, there was another question that caught, caught my eye. Pilate asks Jesus, what is truth? It, it was asked, well, today we'd say it was asked, rhetorically. He said it in a way he didn't want the answer. He said it in a huff and puff kind of way that he would storm off afterwards asking what is truth. Pilate seems to be too practical to be worried about what truth is. Truth doesn't solve things. Might does. Truth doesn't pay the bills. Truth doesn't rule an empire. What good is truth, then? I wanted to read the scriptures in that reverse order to end with reading Isaiah, the, the prophetic messianic text. Hundreds of years before this took place, the, the crucifixion. Before the first Good Friday. That it reminds us what truth is those two questions still in their mind. What is truth? And do you understand what I have done for you? There were three crosses on that hill. When it comes to God holding us accountable for our lives, he has every right to put each of us on a cross. And part of the truth that we're learning, part of the truth that's being revealed, is that what happened to Jesus wasn't a strictly physical pain. There was something else happening, an atoning sacrifice on that cross that we tend to comprehend a tiny bit more. But we don't know exactly how it all went down. Crucifixions would usually take days that the bodies, it said, were brought down to respect the high Sabbath day, and that the legs would be broken of, of those who would be put back up again. But Jesus called out, it is finished. Today we call it Good Friday. Good because we know what was accomplished. 
Good because we can look back. We know what it meant now today that Jesus said it is finished, that he freed the captives. It says he bore our guilt. He paid the debt of our sins. A week before this, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. It's possible maybe that Lazarus, Mary, and Martha were there in Jerusalem, that they were there watching. We will find out one day, but they may have been watching the crucifixion with the words still echoing in their mind of Jesus saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Yet all the people gathered around on that day probably weren't so sure. When we want answers, when we want the answer to that question, what is truth? The answer is probably not that popular today. It's, it's probably not that welcome, that it will be foolishness to some. But for others, we come to see why the life of this man Jesus split time. To where we talk about the time before he came to this world and the time after in the reign of our Lord. That's how I grew up as a young man in school. I, I saw it starting to happen in the textbooks where it used to be B.C. and A.D. And then it became B.C. and B.C.E., sorry, and C.E. The common era and before the common era. So we ask, what is truth? The truth is that splitting of these eras of common era and before common era involved the most breathtaking, most uncommon, most amazing thing this world will ever know. That it wasn't just a man who was a wise teacher. It wasn't a man who just said we ought to be nice to one, each other and one another and do unto others as we would have do unto us. He also spoke of mercy, but he also spoke of forgiveness of sins. that the truth is he was the one innocent man that we will ever know that was found guilty in our courts and took the penalty of sin. And we call today Good Friday because we now know that the death that took place had no hold on him, that he would overcome it. And that is the truth. God be the glory. Amen.